Hi, this is Jeff Challen again, and we're going to continue the process of setting up your 125 development environment by installing some plugins for Eclipse. So, um, just so you get a sense of where I am here, in the, so we go here, we go to MP, set up Eclipse, and then we're going to scroll down to the Eclipse plugins part, because at this point, we've already installed Eclipse. Um, so, uh, Eclipse plugins are uh, ways to extend Eclipse that are maintained by uh, other developers. This is a nice system where other people can, can work on things and add them to this already powerful tool. So uh, we're going to use these plugins this semester, when, particularly when working on MPs, because computers are great at doing things that will help you with your development environment. So for example, checking your code, formatting issues, testing things, and assembling and rerunning the steps required to build large software artifacts from multiple source code files. So, um, but the first thing we need to do is install the Subversive Subversion plugin. This allows you to get access to the source code that you're going to develop uh, for this class this semester. And this is probably the one that's the most complicated. So uh, the first thing that we're going to need to do here is go over to the Eclipse Software Marketplace. Um, so there's, there's two different things we're going to do in this tutorial. One is we're going to click on the Install New Software link. And the other one is we're going to use the marketplace, and it's important to distinguish between those two. The marketplace is quite a bit easier to use. Um, so in this case, I'm going to the marketplace. It's going to spin here for a minute thinking, um, and then it's going to ask me to search. So I'm going to look for subversive. Um, you have to hit return. And then I see that there's a subversive plugin right here. So subversive and SVN team provider 4.05, that's the current version. Uh, you can see this has been installed 2.6 million times, 2.06 million times. So that's probably okay to use. Um, I'm gonna hit install. The default options here are totally fine. Um, and now this is gonna think for a minute. A long, awkward minute while we wait for it to configure the provisioning operation. Um, subversion is something that I'm putting together a different handout to introduce you to. Uh, okay, so it says the following solutions are not available. This is okay. If I hit yes, um, I think it's okay. Uh, so it's going to compute. I have no idea what this install dialog does, but it seems to succeed even though it threw up that scary error. Accept the terms, hit finish. You can see down here at the bottom there's an installing software dialog. When it's finished, you should restart Eclipse. So uh, that'll be the first of multiple times that we will restart Eclipse during this tutorial. Um, okay, so now that we've installed the Subversive plugin, that's part one, we actually need to install some additional software that's going to allow a subversion to synchronize with the course repository that you're going to use in this class. So come back to the instructions and copy this link. Don't click on it. If you click on it, um, you know, it's not going to accomplish what you want. Now when we go back to Eclipse, close the welcome page, we want to use this other dialog here, the install new software dialog, not the marketplace that we used the first time. We go to install new software and then up here we're going to paste that URL that we just cut. Uh, copied from the instructions. Uh, if we hit add, it's going to ask us to give it a name. I'm going to call it subversion connectors. Hit OK. And then what we want here are these subversive SVN connectors. You don't need the sources. So just select that one top box. Hit next. Um, now, this is not the first time we're going to see this dialog where Eclipse claims it cannot perform the operation it's going to compute alternate solutions. This seems to usually work out okay, despite the fact that uh, it's this scary, uh, scary dialog. So in this case, the solution that it's come up with is fine. So up here I'm going to say keep my installation the same and modify the items to be installed to be compatible. That's fine. So I hit next, uh, next again, accept the license agreement, and finish. Um, now I have a warning about installing on-site content. I do want to do this, so click install anyway. You can see again the installing software dialog down there, and now I'm asking to restart Eclipse. So my restart count is now two, but I've completed installing the Subversion plugin. Okay, onward and upward. So we have three more plugins to install. The next two will be fast because they're entirely done through the marketplace. So the check style plugin is a plugin that checks your source code to ensure that it meets a style guideline. Um, 
when you work on large projects with other developers, it's really important that your code look the same as theirs, and check style helps you with that, while also helping that you adhere to good conventions like writing Java doc comments for things. Like that. So the style guidelines that we're using, uh, just so you know, this is a thing. So Google, for example, publishes their own Java style guidelines because they write a lot of Java code. Ours are based on some code conventions, um, but happily, again, installing this plugin is pretty simple. So go back to Eclipse, go to help Eclipse Marketplace. So again, we're going to the Marketplace, which is usually easier to use. Now, once it loads up, I'm going to hit Find Check Style. Hit return. And what I want here is down here at the bottom. So this is the Check Style plugin. 8.0.0. Again, I can see this has been installed like 300,000 times. Uh, so, you know, that's always a thing to look at when you're installing uh, software that, or additions to software that you have is, is anybody else using this? Uh, because the answer is no. Uh, either it may not work, or if it, something strange happens, you're going to have a hard time finding somebody to help you with it. Um, I get the same warning about unsigned content that I've seen in the past. Hit install anyway. Same dialogue at the bottom. Same chance to restart Eclipse. Okay, so restart count is now up to three, but we have the check style plugin done. Okay, uh, you're welcome to race other people to see how fast you can finish these steps. A lot of it just depends on how long it takes Eclipse to restart. Now, let's install a testing framework. So Eclipse comes with built-in support for something called JUnit. Um, I'd like to try using uh, TestNG, or testing, I guess, this semester, because it has some features that JUnit doesn't have, um, even if the website is super out of the net. Like one of our various websites I've been to in a long time. Awesome. Okay, well, we're going to install it anyway. And the process is pretty much identical to the one that you just followed for check style, except for the fact that we're going to install uh, a different package. So I go to Eclipse Marketplace, back to the Marketplace. Again, after it thinks for a while and decides to load up, click up here, test ng. Hit return. And what I want here is the test ng plugin for Eclipse. Again, this has a fair number of installs, so I'm pretty happy about that. Um, click install. Now it's going to resolve features, whatever that means. Um, you can check uh, the uh, M2E integration. We're not going to use that, but you definitely need the core test ng libraries. Accept the terms of license agreement and hit finish. Um, same warning about unsigned content. Hit install anyway. and Restart again. So now I'm up to four restarts. Awesome. Okay, finally, um, the last one is uh, a tool called Gradle. So Gradle is one of many tools that exist to help you create software artifacts from large collections of source code files. So, for example, something like an entire operating system, Android, the code that runs on your Android phone, that is built from thousands and tens of thousands of source code files. And so developers use these build systems help find the things that need to be done, do them in the proper order, and produce a consistent output. Um, Gradle is one such build system that's particularly popular for Java, it seems, these days. Um, but you can use it for a variety of different things. Um, so Gradle is actually so important for Java projects that Eclipse already comes with it, normally pre-installed. However, the bundled version is out of date, um, and so we want to update it. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to, again, copy this link address. Go back to Eclipse, close the welcome screen. Now this time again, I'm going to the install new software dialog. So I click install new software. I do the same thing I did before. I give it a name, we'll call it uh, build chip. Um, okay. And then what I have here are the build chip Eclipse plugins for Gradle. Uh, now I want to check that and hit next. Now again, um, it's going to say that my request has been modified, so it's going to be updated. I already have this plugin. Uh, like I said, Eclipse comes with it, but we do want to update it. Um, accept the terms of the license agreement and hit finish. Again, I see a software installing dialog, and I'm asked to restart Eclipse for the fifth time. So I only had to reinstall Eclipse five times, but we are done. That is the end of, of this tutorial. So um, we have installed a, the Subversion plugin, so now you have Subversion access. We've installed a check style style checker for you to use. We've installed a testing framework, and uh, we've updated our Gradle system. Um, and we're done.